Hello, and welcome to our first introductory STEM workshop preparation lecture. Uh, this lecture will look at introductory stress analysis, and, and I'm Dr. Whitty from the University of Central Lancashire. Just a word about the teaching and learning which we I expect to take place in this lecture and a rundown of the lesson structure and all type of um, lessons take this structure for these this taster type module the lesson will be lessons will be subject divided into eight parts namely a statement of the learning objectives points of order introduction via material classifications we'll look at concept introduction of stress distributions, the development of related principles, specifically here we'll be looking at the at something called displacement as opposed to deflection of what we've or extension which we've looked at in the past and then we'll look at some concrete examples at, by, via reinforcement workshop exercises. And finally we'll summarize and get some formative feedback from you um, via homework um, task. Just on a note, just noting that the these sessions, this particular lecture, is divided into a number of segments. And at the end of each segment, you'll be asked to perform a specific task for us, which is by way of some type of calculation. So, our learning objectives. Learning objectives is to define what a composite material is and uh, describe typical test procedures used in testing composite materials. Solve simple problems using appropriate scientific formulae involving stress and strain. And finally, answer the quiz and examination type questions relating to stress, strain and displacements. Just as a point of order, we got some reports that students missed the stress te the, the strength test, the so-called tensile test. It is in the second lesson on the slide looking at metals. But as a point of order, I did want to say that this isn't alien just to metals. In fact, most materials that undergo stress, which are generally divided into the four that we discovered in the last lesson, the metals, the polymers, including semiconductors, the composites, and then the ceramics. In fact, metals, polymers, and composites generally um, are tested in the same way. It's a tensile test where what we what we term dog boned specimens specimens that when pulled will have a constant strain field in these particular parts and hence should fail across this strain field this constant strain field they are put into the jaws of a tensiometer here and here and then pulled to destruction these particular ones are, compos are composites and in the composite materials we can see two phases the first phase is the what we call the reinforcement phase the fiber 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 phase and the other phase is usually polymeric these particular ones are polymeric don't necessarily have to be um, but usually polymeric um, and uh, we call that the matrix phase of the material Generally speaking, they're inhomogeneous so because they consist of more than one phase, unlike the other materials, such as polymers and metals, um, that, or metals and ceramics, I should say, um, uh, which are usually what we call homogeneous materials. That means to say only one phase. And polymers are sort of a mixture of the two. They look, um, at first glance, like they are of a single phase material 
but when you look at them closely you can see there are amorphous and crystalline phases within them so they are um, sort of a semi um, homogeneous type material but will act as a homogeneous material under many circumstances so that's homogeneity and heterogeneity meaning two and uh, two phases and then there's um, non-homogeneity which may means many phases just to recap then from last time is to evaluate the stress in a composite bar as shown here of 30 millimeters in diameter um, if acted upon by a force of 1.5 kilonewtons and we said that force over area is equal to our stress so if we wish and we also said that if we kept the trick of the trade as it were if we kept our force in newtons in this case 1500 newtons because it's killer just like kilogram and our diameter of the bar is in millimeters squared sorry, our area of the bar is millimetres squared, we, the result will be in megapascals. So we could compute this one relatively easily by saying sigma, which is the Greek letter S for stress, is equal to 1500 divided by A, and we say that A is equal to pi d squared over 4, which we, sh we showed in the last lesson that this was um, indeed also equal to pi r squared. So therefore we can find our area as pi times 30 squared divided by 4, which turns out to be 707, if you put it in your calculator, um, to three significant figures. In the last lesson, we rounded things to a couple of decimal places, just like your GCSE math, but now we're in to the realms of becoming more, thinking more like engineers, and engineers usually work to about, usually work to three significant figures, because thereafter we have a change in uh, an order of magnitude. So the stress, of course, from above is simply 1500 divided by 707, and if we work that out, <coughs> we see that it's um, 2.12, and we remember that newtons per millimetre squared, which is what we calculated out here, is equal to the mega pascal. Okay, so that's the end of this first segment, um, but before we go uh, for this segment, I'd like you to have a look at the example strain calculation. We'd like to evaluate the strain in our 30 millimeter diameter bar if we're given an original length of 30 millimeters and we observe the extension, that's why we use the X um, in our little formula above, um, to be 2.5 micrometers. So if you could do that calculation and then come back, we'll solve it for you in the next segment.